Hey everyone, it's Tuesday, December 29th. The time is 1.36 p.m. and the temperature right now is minus four degrees Celsius. I'm here at the intersection of Front Street East and Jarvis Street. And there's a look south at the St. Lawrence Market, which is open today till 5 p.m. And the plan for this one is to walk north along Jarvis Street, up to where it becomes Ted Rogers Way, and then on to Bloor Street. The stretch of Jarvis Street south of Front Street down to the lake is known as Lower Jarvis, but I won't be walking along that part today. I'm currently on the east side of Jarvis. There's a look west towards the financial district and where they're currently reconstructing the northern part of the St. Lawrence Market. And just up ahead here is King Street East. There's a look at the St. Lawrence Hall that was built in 1850. It was built for public gatherings and concerts and exhibitions. And it actually had a 1,000 seat amphitheater when it originally opened. We seem to have come across someone giving a tour of the city. That was kind of neat. He was reading information off the plaque on that building, which I kind of wanted <laughs> to take a look at. Here's a look west at St. James Park and St. James Cathedral in the background. Jarvis is a rather interesting street that runs north to south on the east side of downtown. It's got some interesting quirks, which I'll talk about. Namely being a reversible center lane of traffic that runs between There's a good driver for you. That runs between Queen and Isabella. At least I think that's where it runs between. This is Adelaide Street. That's a one-way street that heads east and just to the north of it is Richmond Street, a one-way street that runs in the opposite direction. And even though it's minus four, it's actually a pretty mild day. There's not a whole lot of wind. I'm not even wearing gloves right now. And this is my first time getting out and recording a video like this since Christmas Day. Just trying to keep my distance there. So this is Richmond Street. There's one of the few remaining downtown gas stations. Richmond and Adelaide do have bike lanes. 
So you can take those east to west across the core. And once upon a time, you could take your bike down the Jarvis Street bike lane. Back in 2009, city council voted to add a bike lane to Jarvis. Here's the Consulate General of Indonesia. It's kind of a neat find. I was not even aware that was there. And then when Rob Ford was elected, the bike lanes were soon removed from Jarvis. So they were only here for a couple of years. But at least when they removed the bike lanes from Jarvis, they put bike lanes in just to the east of here on Sherburn Street. So it wasn't a total loss. According to the sign, this is Old Town Toronto, and this is Historic Queen East. There's a look east down Queen Street East, and that would be the Moss Park area. And there is the Moss Park Armory. There's certainly a lot of sirens in the city right now. The Moss Park Armory is operated by the Canadian Armed Forces. And it currently hosts a number of reserve units. I think it was in 2018, they got emergency approval to use it as a homeless shelter. The city was experiencing freezing cold temperatures and there was not enough capacity to accommodate everyone on the street. So they got permission from the federal government to go ahead and use it as a homeless shelter. And hopefully things don't get that cold this year. But it's good to know we have that facility on standby if need be. And just on the east side of the Moss Park Armory is the rather infamous Moss Park. It's generally thought that that's one of the roughest parts of downtown. In general, the east side doesn't have the best reputation, although I've never found it to be particularly unsafe. And we are approaching the intersection of Shooter and Jarvis. I think right here on the northeast corner, they're constructing a 35-story hotel and condo. There you can see some of the Canadian Armed Forces vehicles. And just behind this condo development, they're actually taking down a high rise. That's the old Grand Hotel. There's a look. West Down Shooter, that'll take you to the Eaton Center. I wasn't walking particularly slow. There's no need for that guy to honk. I just slowed down to give this couple some distance in between me and them, as we are supposed to do these days. So 
So here's the number of older properties that I think are going to be part of this condo development. And here where the Grand Hotel used to be, or kind of still is, used to be a 177 room hotel. And prior to being converted into a hotel, it was actually where the Royal Canadian Mounted Police called home in the city of Toronto. They left at some point in the early 90s and it was converted into a hotel. And I think that building had some asbestos issues. So hopefully those aren't still prevalent while the hotel is being dismantled. There are plans to replace it with a 50-story hotel and condo. And here is the intersection of Jarvis and Dundas. So just to the east of here would be Dundas Square. And this building, which I'm zooming in on, is an old warehouse. They used to store department store goods there, I think for Sears Canada. It's been since converted into a loft. And the reason I mention that as we look west down Dundas, view to the, sorry, east down Dundas, there's a view west towards Dundas Square. And the reason I mentioned that converted loft there is this building here, which it's a particularly ugly, kind of brutalist, inverted pyramid style building. It is the former home of Sears Canada. And that was built back in the middle of the brutalist era in 1971. It certainly looks like one of those ugly government buildings you'd expect to see. And it was sold in 2007. I'm trying to see if I can remember or read off the building who currently occupies it. I think it's the Ontario Realty Corporation. I guess there was a period in time where somebody thought that was a good looking structure. Jarvis and Sherburn Street, just to the east of here, are lined with old manors like this. This used to be the ritzy part of town. In fact, we'll be going by the Keg Mansion shortly. That's just north of Wellesley. And there's the Inglewood Arms, and it looks like there's currently a proposal to put a 36-story building here. can't imagine this place having particularly good TripAdvisor reviews. There's another what looks to be brutalist era building, the Ontario Court of Justice.
Jarvis is an interesting mix of older buildings and just generic looking apartment slabs. Doesn't seem to have a cohesive retail street front. And as I mentioned earlier, this center lane here is reversible. So this middle lane changes directions in between Queen as I said, I think up to Isabella. You'll notice there is no solid line in the middle of Jarvis. And the middle lane goes southbound, except for, I think, 3.45 to 6.30 p.m. on weekdays when it goes northbound. There's a five minute changeover period where the lane cannot be used in either direction. And I'll show you the traffic sign that indicates if the lane is open or closed to the direction you're traveling in. And here is Jarvis and Gerard Street. I remember looking up this Econo Lodge and seeing that it actually had decent reviews. I think on TripAdvisor it had a three star overall which is certainly a bit higher than I would have thought it would have got. There's a look east down Gerard. And across the street is the famous Harvey's. This area used to be known as a bit of a red light district. Sorry. Guy. It kind of spooked me asking me for a smoke. And that Harvey's is affectionately known as Hooker Harvey's. In fact, you could even search for that term in Google Maps and it'll take you right there. And here is the Jarvis Street Baptist Church. I think this one goes back to 1875. And there's the Toronto Baptist Seminary. This one's a bit older than the church. Here's some older buildings that look to be slated as part of a redevelopment. And just on the right is the Allen Gardens. This part of town is known as the Garden District, named after the Allen Gardens. This is a large park. There's a pretty big playground in Off Leash Dog Park. And there's also a conservatory which features six greenhouses. The botanical gardens right now would be currently closed due to the current measures in place. I've talked about this in previous via or <laughs> vehicles videos before. And this building here is the old Best Western Primrose Hotel, which I think about five years ago was converted into the Parkside Ryerson Student Residences. That renovation clocked in at somewhere around $35 million. And this mural was done by a Spanish artist, Okuda San Miguel. I'm trying my best to <laughs> remember these things. And that was done a few years ago. That's not the only prominent piece of artwork done by a Spanish artist in the city of Toronto as there's that giant dreaming head on Adelaide Street. And here is 
the Grace Toronto Church. That one dates back to the 1870s and we're at Carlton and Jarvis. Let's look west, just off in the distance there is Maple Leaf Gardens at Church and Jarvis. There's a lot of the older style homes you see along Jarvis. And that there, the red X I'm attempting to zoom in on, is the traffic sign that signals that the middle lane is closed to northbound traffic. So on the other side, that would be, I think, a green arrow. I'll turn around and take a look when we get to the other side. And that would signify that it's open to southbound traffic. There you go, it's a green arrow pointing down. And this building over there is called the Northfield Estate. That's part of Canada's National Ballet. That building goes back to 1856. Some interesting inflatable Christmas decorations on the, on the lawn of this apartment. There is 437 Jarvis Street. I had a friend that had a unit in this building. And as part of Canada's National Ballet, just next to it is I think the sign says the Betty Oliphant Theater. That's another, I wanna say, mid 1800s era building. I don't really know a whole lot about the ballet's operations. That certainly looks like it's a thoroughly modern facility. There's the Blake House, restaurant and pub. And this facility here is called Soul Camps. Learn, have fun, make friends. 469 and 467 Jarvis. And this place, it's another very similar style building. It's occupied by these people, the light. Kind of Stiffing around, trying to see if I can see a plaque or anything with information there. And here we are at Jarvis and Maitland.
such an interesting mix of different forms of the built environment along Jarvis Street. We have a really grand old looking school just here on the right. And I'll refrain from trying to guess about this property as I do see what looks like a heritage plaque. I don't think this op or operates as a traditional high school anymore. This is the old Jarvis Collegiate Institute, founded in 1807. I love that. Signs in French. And I think it might be operating as some kind of experimental learning center these days. I don't think it's a Toronto School Board property anymore. I might be completely wrong on that. And just up ahead is Wellesley Street East. You could turn east here and take this through St. Jamestown and then into Cabbage Town. And according to that sign, it's zero degrees Celsius. My watch told me it was minus four when I started this walk. I wonder why it feels a lot warmer than it really is. And just up here on the right is the Keg Mansion, formerly known as Euclid Hall. The Keg is a chain of steakhouses, at least here in Ontario. I don't know where else it extends to. I was lucky enough to eat at the Esplanade location of the Keg during the pandemic when outdoor dining was allowed. This would be their flagship location. That building goes back to 1868 and it's definitely an experience worth having. And across the street is the Berkeley Bicycle Club. That's an events venue. Formerly the Gooderham House. I'm wondering if that's in any relation to the Gooderham family of Gooderham and Wart's distillery district fame. And the Flatiron Building, which sits at Front and Church Street. As I mentioned, this used to be a rather ritzy part of town. There's a lot of old money that used to be here. And here is the Princess Margaret Cancer Center Lodge. So you'll notice that center lane it's still reversible this far north. We're almost at Bloor Street, probably three, four blocks. And just up ahead is Isabella. So I think that's where the reversible center lane comes to an end. And it's also, if I'm not mistaken, where Jarvis Street comes to an end. It might be here or at Charles Street. In 2009, the northern end of the street was renamed Ted Rogers Way to commemorate Ted Rogers, the media tycoon, 
who for some reason has a statue of himself in front of the Sky Dome. You'd think Rogers headquarters would be a much more appropriate venue for that statue. If I ever become a billionaire, that's what I'll do. I'll buy the Blue Jays, rip that statue up and put one in of Joe Carter. Maybe a Dave Steve statue to go along with it. So you could continue straight and duck down into Mount Pleasant. I think it might be easier if I cross the street here. There's Look South. So this stretch between Isabella and Charles is still Jarvis Street. And there is the Evil Empire the headquarters of Rogers Communications. A company I vowed never to use again. And now find myself using two of their products. I have their home internet. It's the fastest available where I live, which is a necessity when you use the internet as much as I do to operate these two channels. And I use them for their wireless data package. They have the best one that seems to be geared towards doing the kind of outdoor streaming that I do. So this part here becomes Mount Pleasant Road. I actually recorded a car ride down Mount Pleasant or up Mount Pleasant Road the other day. And that was uploaded to this channel today. And there's a look to the west down Charles Street, but we will continue north up to Bloor Street. And then I'll find my way over to a subway station. Maybe I'll head over to Sherburn. I'm always starting and finishing walks at Bloor Young Station, so. Let's go east for a stop. There's a look up at the evil campus. Rogers isn't exactly known for its consumer friendly practices. And they're actually still practicing upload speed throttling, or they at least started it again during the pandemic. So if you're a heavy uploader, you might find your upload speed just being cut in half. And they're saying that's a bandwidth saving measure. Although what they should be doing is dynamically controlling upload speeds instead of chopping everyone down at the knees and only giving them half of what they pay for even if you're like me and you upload overnight when traffic's light and that's a real problem if you're not a Rogers customer because if you use a third party like tech savvy trying to get your speed restored is pretty much like pulling teeth it's a very unfair practice. I'm not sure why the CRTC allows it. They're basically telling the people that actually use their connections that they use it too much. And in the process, implementing a rather ancient and archaic method of just cutting your bandwidth in half instead of, as I said, dynamically reallocating it. In a nutshell, that's Rogers for you. They're kind of the big evil bully that nobody really likes. And here I am hypocritically as a customer of theirs.
so I'm currently walking east along the south side of Bloor Street East. There's another Rogers building. And we're just passing over the start of Mount Pleasant Road. This area is known as Upper Jarvis, and this is Huntley Street. You can kind of just see the tip of the CN Tower to the south there. So this would be pretty much the very northern end of downtown. And we're close to the eastern boundary. There's a discount supermarket in there, no frills. And the National Post. Looks like that aroma hasn't even bothered to open for takeout customers. And here we go. This is the intersection of Sherburn and Bloor Street East, just to the north there is the rather affluent Rosedale neighborhood, just on the other side of the valley there. And these are the bike lanes I talked about earlier that were implemented on Sherburn to make up for the bike lanes that were removed from Jarvis. In a perfect world, both streets would have bike lanes. And now we're at Sherburn Station. I gotta throw my mask on. I'll leave the camera running while I head down to the subway platform. I'm wearing a winter toque, so it's a bit hard to slide the mask underneath it over my ear. There we go. Make sure the nose is covered. I'm sure this thing is well, it's super crooked and I look really stupid right now, but let's just let this busload of people funnel into the station here. Thank you. Yep. I don't know the etiquette on offering people help these days. We're supposed to keep our distance, but some people could use a hand or at least have someone help carry their bags down the steps. And I'm going to go eastbound. 
There's an area I want to explore for a little bit, just a few stops east of here. It says the next train will be in two minutes. So I will end the video at this. This is line two, so these are the east-west trains. So I hope you enjoyed this walk up Jarvis Street and then briefly along Bloor to Sherburne Station. There are links to my Patreon account in the description if you wish to support the channel. can also check out memberships from the main page. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next one. The next station is Castle Frank, Castle Frank Station.